Hello. So in the two previous videos, we just saw that the frequency response of an LTI system equals the Fourier transform of the impulse response. If the system is continuous time, we use the continuous time Fourier transform. If the system is discrete time, we use the discrete time Fourier transform to do all the ideal mathematical analysis. These are our mathematical spectrum analyzers. If we are in a situation where we have measured um, signals, signals that were maybe continuous time, but they were sample quantized, they are in digital form in a computer or going through a DSP processor, then we are going to use the discrete Fourier transform. And to find it, we are actually use a fast algorithm, the fast Fourier transform. Okay, so what is the frequency response of an FIR filter? A finite impulse response filter. Well, we need to compute the Fourier transform of the impulse response. An FIR filter, finite impulse response, is that continuous or digital? It is digital. So it's going to be the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response. Now, finite impulse response, this is just a finite set of numbers. So this is going to be easy to do. But with that, let's remind ourselves what was the impulse response of an FIR filter. Did you recall? They were just the P coefficients. Let's see that. So... FIR filter, FIR, finite impulse response, meaning H of N is going to be zero for N greater than a particular number, okay? You're going to call it N equal, uh, greater than M, where M is a, a number. So let's, let's go ahead and do, remind ourselves what was the difference equation. The, in order to, to apply an FIR filter to implement, the output was a linear combination of present and past inputs. Only depends on the input, not of previous outputs. So no recursion. And this was, so a coefficient multiplied times the present input plus another one, a delayed version of it, plus another one. This just keeps going, right? Up to I'm going to call V M X of N minus M. We can express this in more compact form since we have just a sum sum. It is a finite sum, so this goes from n from k equals, sorry, this is k equals 0 to m and we have b of k x of n minus k. So this is the difference equation for an FIR filter, okay? Difference equation for FIR. Okay. So we just need to find the impulse response and then compute the Fourier transform of it. Now, how do we find? the impulse response of a system, we put a delta. If it, uh, if it is a discrete time system, we put a unit delta. And we evaluate what the output is. So let's find the impulse response. H of n equals, this is, this is our difference equation. We need to find that output, right? when this input is a delta. Our impulse response here is going to be B0 delta N plus B1 delta M minus 1 plus B2 X of M minus 2 that, that, that. B M X of M minus M. 
So that's the impulse of it's a delta here. Delta and delta m minus m. So notice that actually the impulse response x of n just equals the vector of b coefficients. I want to say b0, b1, b2, da da da, bm. The filter coefficients in an FIR filter equals the impulse response. So what is the frequency response? Remember, the frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response. Okay. So really, this is going to be the Fourier transform. What is the impulse response? The B coefficients, the BK coefficients. That's going to give us the frequency response. Okay. I'm going to put it here as the frequency response. Okay. So if we want to do that analytically with our ideal spectral analyzer, which one, which Fourier transform will we use? FIR filter is a discrete time system. Therefore, we are going to use the discrete time Fourier transform. This one is actually the discrete time Fourier transform of your impulse response h of n, which happens to be equal to the b coefficients, will give you the frequency response. Well, let's write it out. This is the sum of h of n e to the minus j omega hat n n from minus infinity to infinity this will give us, this is the frequency response for any discrete time system that is LTI, meaning that this is completely characterized by the impulse response, right? We put the impulse response in, we get the frequency response out. Let's go particularly now for FIR filters. What do we know in, a, in the case of an FIR filter? Well, we know that, number one, we don't have to do this infinite sum, because there is a finite number, countable number of coefficients. So we can go from n equals zero to the number of coefficients, right, that you have in B, and then you have here the B coefficients, e to the minus g omega n hat. I just put, so this will be the vector of B coefficients, this B1, B2, B3, B4. That's effectively the frequency response of an FIR filter, meaning you're computing the discrete time Fourier transform over a finite sum by a, of the filter coefficients which equals the impulse response. Now notice that even though this is a finite sum, you still get this as a function of continuous, continuous omega. That's fine mathematically. You can write that in the paper, you can understand it, but then to actually, for instance, plot it in a computer, you need to plot a set of numbers. Which ones do we choose? Well, if this is the discrete time Fourier transform of your impulse response, what are we going to do? We are going to evaluate at omega hat equals what? 2 pi over n k. And because the signal was finite, this was a finite impulse response, these limits of integration, you do not lose anything from going from the discrete time Fourier transform to the discrete Fourier transform. And this you can evaluate at as many points as you want. So many that when you plot this, on a retina display screen, looks continue to, to, continues to your eye because it's maximum resolution that we can see. Okay? But the number of points that you will use, the computational resolution depends on the application. Uh, you will want to use the minimum number of points that are adequate for your application to improve computational resources. Now, this, if you want to 
see it as a function of frequency uh, or in hertz. This will be equivalent to 2 pi normalized maps to fs sampling frequency divided by n times k. And this is important if you're putting the axis in a computer loop, like using MATLAB, Optif, or any other tool where you have an FFT available at your disposal. You apply the FFT to a signal, it gives you a set of, or it gives you the frequency response, but then you need to still put the access, right? And this is what you, what you need to know. You, need, you are dividing from zero to FS into by endpoints. Okay, so let's, let's recap. What did we do here? Finding the frequency response of an FIR filter. How? The frequency response is the impulse response. Sorry, is the frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response. Which Fourier transform? For continuous time systems, the continuous time Fourier transform. For discrete time systems, the discrete time Fourier transform. FIR, a discrete time system. Therefore, the frequency response of an FIR filter equals the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response. So next, what is the impulse response? The impulse response equals to the filter coefficients. Okay. And that's how you will do it analytically, and we're going to do an example in the next video. However, how will you do it computationally? You will compute the discrete Fourier transform using the fast Fourier transform, for which the only requirement is that the number of points that you are evaluating is a power of 2. Now you may ask, well, I have a 10 point or a 50 point or a 101 point, whatever, FIR filter. It is not a power of 2. Can I still use the FFT? The answer is yes. Why? Because you assume B equals B0, B1, B2, Bm. This is the true impulse response. And then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the 0 padding to make this signal to be the length that you want, the power of 2, so you can apply the FFT. It increases also your computational resolution. Not your frequency resolution, but your computational resolution, as we will see in some of the practical videos. So that's it. The Fourier, the frequency response of an FIR filter is the discrete time Fourier transform of the filter coefficients. And computationally, you can do it through the discrete Fourier transform, for which you will use the fast Fourier transform to compute it. Thank you. Let's do a couple of examples.